And it's time for another episode of the Dr. William Lester Show. I want to thank you for joining me in another excursion into the world of the cool vintage lifestyle. I want to remind you guys that you can listen to the show on the Blackwater Media YouTube channel, Google Plus, the William Lester Facebook page, and the Dr. William Lester Show Facebook page. Uh, The show, of course, can be downloaded into an MP3 format for enjoyment on whatever kind of mobile device you have. I know everybody's got all kinds of things now and but no matter what you're doing no matter where you are you can listen to this program as long as you have an internet connection or the possibility of an internet connection or a device that can play an mp3 file or both you have full access to this program in fact I guess somehow some way you may find yourself in a situation where you can't get an internet connection? Well, if you've downloaded the show and saved it as an MP3 file, you're still good. I imagine there are still a few places that you can go where getting on the internet and staying connected to the internet is quite a challenge. If you find yourself in that set of circumstances, You should still be good. So, I wanted to continue our conversation about the cool vintage lifestyle by talking about a film. In the last episode, we did a rather extensive examination of the television series Kolchak the Night Stalker and now I want to take it into the arena of a made for television film which I encountered quite by accident but over the years it has become one of those films that while being certainly enjoyable it is absolutely attained the status of a, of, uh, of a cult film and to my thinking must be relatively obscure uh, because to my knowledge it still has not received a commercial release on a digital platform. I may be wrong but I looked around and I haven't seen it commercially available and the key word there is commercially and as many of you may know or may suspect when I use the word commercially that can also be interpreted as officially Um, because it is available on a digital platform unofficially but we probably are not going to go into great detail about that. But this was a made-for-TV film. 1978. And it had a pretty good cast. I mean, when you, when you, when you look down the roster uh, of the cast, it's fairly strong. And uh, again, there are people who, who just as a reflex action will cast dispersions on a made-for-TV film. And I I think that it is an unfair characterization. Because, of course, made-for-TV films are, are, are still being made today. And in a lot of cases, well, you know, they're not going to have a $100 million budget. But in a lot of cases, in many cases, they have they have strong actors, top flight writers, and pretty good production values. But in this film, you have a cast. Uh, you have Robert Foxworth, Joe Penny, Barbara Trentham, Dolph Sweet, 
Charles Hayde, of course, of Hill Street Blues fame. Deborah Lee Scott, France Nguyen. And uh, Brascom Richmond, who was a notable Native American uh, actor. I stumbled across this film as a 12-year-old on one of those Friday night creature feature situations that I talked about a couple of episodes ago. And, of course, that was, I was still, I think, in my formative stages. Never seen this film before that, never heard of it. And I do remember it was like two in the morning. So whatever I had done that day, and I still had the energy to be up at two in the morning, ready and willing to watch a movie, it must have been extraordinary. But I still remember there had been a horror film on prior to that, which I had wanted to see. And I watched the film. Must have started around midnight. I watched the film. Film ends. And you know how the film you you just watched, or maybe the film you wanted to see, you know, it's over. And you're just kind of... And I was laying there. I was, I was in my room, in the bed. And I don't remember how sleepy I was. But when this movie started up, I, I, you know, I was like, wait a minute. Wait just a moment. Is this a film I might need to stay up and watch? And of course, yes, it was. And I saw the title on the screen, Death Moon. And I couldn't believe it. Here was what appeared to be a werewolf movie that I had heretofore never heard of. Certainly never seen it. So, I thought it would be interesting to bring this film to this program. Hopefully, a few of you have heard of it. Maybe a lot of you haven't. But, it is one that I must include in the pantheon of those cool vintage horror films that I have grown to enjoy over the years so I'll set the stage for you Um, Robert Foxworth basically is a high powered businessman wheeling and dealing and he has come under a great deal of stress and it started to affect his health and he goes to his doctor and after the, you know, little back and forth about the rat race, the doctor doesn't prescribe any medication for him, but he, but he writes on his prescription pad, take a vacation. And he goes out into the lobby of the doctor's office. And of course there, there are magazines, different, you know, magazines on sale and he buys a travel magazine and, and he and up on the wall there's a travel poster talking about Hawaii. Anyway, so you can kind of see how all of the inferences there, he's going to Hawaii. And when he gets out there, of course you have all of the all of the, um, the obligatory uh, images that you would expect to see sun and surf uh, a lot of the kind of Hawaii 5 esque imagery he's laying by the pool in the Elton John sunglasses you have all of the appropriate geography with the in, you know in bikinis and a lot of them are airline stewardesses and uh, in other positions that are appropriate to the scenario laid out here. 
waitresses, cocktail waitresses, and what have you. But he meets a woman and a very tall, elegant, attractive woman, character played by Barbara Trentham. And they strike up a conversation and to make a long story short, they really hit it off. He's a high-powered businessman. She, too, has made herself into a formidable uh, figure in the world of business. I think it. I think that it was real estate. I think, I may be wrong, but uh, you guys really need to check out the film. But they are two very high-powered business figures. And, of course, they hit it off. And of course, Robert Foxworth is really, you know, being portrayed as the the man's man uh, type of uh, character. And um, Barbara Trentham is, is just very clearly, like I said, just as tall, elegant, silky smooth, blonde uh, object of desire. And they take some time to enjoy the scenic areas of the islands. They go out, they're walking around. So they go into, I think it's it's some kind of museum or some kind of, of historical landmark on the islands. And he recognizes in one of the photographs, in one of the exhibitions, one of his ancestors. And this ancestor had been a, a missionary in the 19th century, you know, of course. And it, and it plays into that old thing about, you know, these missionaries coming to bring, you know, the, 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 uh, the civilization and Christianity to these godless savages. It, it plays into all of that. And so obviously some inferences are being made here. Some seeds are being planted here. Obviously, the fact that his ancestor had come to the islands in the 19th century as a missionary is going to be germane to this story. So, as you watch the film, you're introduced to the character played by Joe Penny, who was the house detective at the resort hotel where all of the important characters are staying. He, of course, is friends with Dolph Sweet, who plays the local police officer. He's the local um, police brass. I don't remember what his rank is, captain, sergeant, lieutenant, something like that. But he's he's the big guy. He's the big cop in the area. And you're introduced to the character played by Charles Hade, who is a hotel room thief. This is a guy who's staying in the hotel and he's making duplicates of room keys. And of course, he's going from room to room stealing the valuables of the guests. So there, there's really great interplay here. You have all of these things. You got the high-powered business people you got the hotel detective. You've got the local cop bigwig. You've got the room thief. I mean, all of this interplay. You've got the 19th century missionary ancestor. And you have all of the beauty and charm of the, of the islands. And then the murders begin. Mostly young women. Attacked. Essentially ripped apart torn limb from limb obviously the work of some homicidal maniac but you and I know better you and I know that it's the work of lycanthropic activity so what's happening here well we'll talk about that but to segue into that I want to reach back for some of the Speed Hollow pipe tobacco that we enjoyed on another episode. It, it was so enjoyable, I wanted to revisit it. Of course, we, we will enjoy and talk about other pipe tobacco 
brands. But the Sleepy Hollow brand leaves such an impression, and and it's and it's, it's frankly one of my favorites. I wanted to bring it back out tonight. Um, so I've already got the the pipe bowl loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and initiate the the lighting. Of course, with the diamond matches. Here we go. Mm-hmm. It's always amazing. And again, absolutely capturing the the feel, the essence, the the autumnal quality that you would like to achieve. And I'm pairing that I'm pairing that tonight uh, with uh, well, we talked about a highball in the earlier show, but I I, I told you that a highball can consist of a number of combinations. Well, this one, while I I did I did return to uh, using ginger ale, uh, this one actually is made. Uh, it's paired. The ginger ale is paired with Cutty Sark Scotch. Which, of course, is a a classic old brand, a, a iconic uh, branding with the yellow label and the clipper ship. Uh, you'll recognize it immediately. Cuddy Sark blended Scotch whiskey. Again, at a at a what I would consider the upper range of the uh, the the modic the moderate price point it's about uh, 21 22 dollars for the bottle but just a classic brand and you can never go wrong with it um, so we are as a matter of fact let me make sure that the pipe is properly lit so we don't have to keep going back and back there you go. Fantastic. So, we're talking about Death Moon, 1978, made for television movie. So clearly at this point, something is awry in this resort on the Hawaiian Island. We've had a murder, and now the police are involved, and... One of the fun things in the movie is this back and forth between the Joe Penny character, who is the the house detective at the hotel, and Dolph Sweet, who is the Hawaiian police department officer. And of course, you know it's going to you know it's going to be reduced down to a jurisdictional argument where Dolph Sweet's character is just saying, hey, you stick to the towel thieves and the guys who are double parked. And the Joe Penny character is like, no, we have a mystery here. You know, oh, we've got a room thief and we've got it. And so, you know, there's a back and forth. Dolph Sweet is an older man. Joe Penny is a young man. And so there's also that generational conflict going on between them. So it's another undercurrent of the film. Well, you have these guys, they're they're dick swinging, ostensibly. So it's another layer to everything that's going on. Meanwhile, these murders are happening. And by the way, the, the thefts from the rooms continue as we follow that other storyline of, of the Charles Hay character, the room thief. All of these things are swirling around in this film. In addition to this romance between the Robert Foxworth character and the Barbara Trentham character. So, what's the crux of this? The Robert Foxworth character, as we said, had an ancestor who came to the islands in the 19th century as a missionary. 
came in, destroyed all of the uh, spiritual and sacred landmarks of the natives. And of course, was placed under a native curse. And this was a, a family curse, a generational curse, which, of course, has extended down to the Robert Foxworth character. And he is the, well, I guess beneficiary would be a ridiculous word, but he, he is the, the recipient. The curse has come down to him from his ancestor. He is cursed to transform into a lycanthrope. He is cursed with lycanthropy. He is the unwitting victim of werewolfism, where under the rise of the full moon, he is transformed into a horrific, murderous monstrosity. And this is how this this film plays out. The Joe Penny character gets hip to it first because he goes to the library and starts researching some of the local folklore. Now, the character played by France Nguyen is a very interesting character. She plays a local, um, I guess what you'd call witch doctor. And she has a lot of power and influence. And in the film, when you sit and watch the film, you can see she exudes authority. She is the authoritative island mystic. She knows what's going on here. She knows the history. And so everything that's happening, it, it's its not a mystery to her. So the Joe Penny character, the hotel house detective character, is following up everything. There are a number of grisly murders. And there are a couple of twists that I don't want to give away on the show because I really want you guys to track this film down and watch it. So there are some little things in here that happen that I don't want to give away because they're really cool little angles that happen. And I want you to see them and I don't want to, you know, be the spoiler. Now, in the first episode of the show, I talked about special effects, the, the relative level of special effects down through the years. And I'm going to bring this up because... It really, you know, as a as as a connoisseur of the cool vintage lifestyle, this is something that really, really, uh, well, it doesn't sit well with me. Uh, in in I think the first episode, you know, I talked about how, you know, you can take a film or a TV show that was made 35, 40, 50 years ago, and it is nonsensical to try to to compare it to the type of special effects that are that are executed today. And of course, this is, you know, this remains true with this film. This film was made in 1978. So for some blogger or some smart ass on the internet to go into great explanation about the special effects of the film and it's this is cheesy and this is this and this is that well I know that it probably makes that guy feel pretty clever that he can do that but the special effects and this film and by special effects I'm mostly talking about the transformation from man into werewolf let's face it but the, the special effects are executed in a manner that is quite typical and normal for a made-for-television movie in 1978. And to think or to expect it to be anything beyond that is dumb. So, again, I talked about this before. Being able to watch something and appreciate it for what it is in the context of when it was made. 
So if you're 30 years old, again, you know, I, if you're 30 years old and you see this film, no, there was no CGI in 1978. So don't ex- don't expect it to look like uh, something that you might see in one of the underworld films or one of these other films that are so inculcated with with digitalization that it's like watching something on on PlayStation. So, and this is obviously this is going to be a recurring theme. As long as we're talking about horror movies and sci-fi movies, fantasy movies that require special effects, this is going to be an ongoing theme. When you're watching a fantasy film, which includes special effects, it's, it's going to be the result of whatever time period it was made in. So please you know, continue to understand that. For, for those people who have a hard time giving proper perspective and, and, and context. Now, I said earlier that I don't believe that this film, Death Moon, has ever been officially released in a digital platform, either streaming or a DVD. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody out there scrounging around will find it. It is available from a number of internet retailers in an unofficial capacity, shall we say. So people have to make their own choices on how to proceed with that. I will say that it is absolutely worth watching. It is absolutely worth adding to your vocabulary of cool vintage horror films. Death Moon, 1978, Robert Foxworth, Joe Penny, Barbara Trentham, Dolph Sweet, Charles Hay, Deborah Lee Scott, France DeWin, and Brascom Richmond. We're into September now, and it's not too early to start giving consideration to your cool vintage Halloween film festival. I've been holding this celebration this kind of personal Halloween film festival oh god for probably 10 years now and it's a great annual tradition it's great just on a personal level but it's even better if you can involve friends I typically will start in the last week of September just to give it an you know an extra week you know just outside of October started the last week of September set the stage and I will go through my library now you know what's it's really cool because obviously you can't see every film every year so uh, sometimes it's 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 a it, it's kind of hit or miss you know let's see maybe something I overlooked last year we can get to this year but that's another really cool thing invite your friends over every weekend from like the end of September through Halloween. Great cool vintage activity here. Invite your friends over every weekend for your cool vintage Halloween film festival. Have your cocktails, have your smokes, have your food. And we'll talk about some menu suggestions because we're still relatively early in September. We'll talk about some menu suggestions to make this an absolute, not just a success, but a hit. And of course, some of you listening, you know, people are living in different parts of the country, different parts of the world. Here in the great city of Atlanta, Georgia, you know, we can can use the grill 10 months out of the year, or hell, maybe even 12 months out of the year. I know it may not be possible everywhere, but most of the time, my suggestions are going to include something prepared on the grill. But it is not too late to start planning this. It's a great tradition. It enforces the concept of the cool vintage lifestyle. It's an enjoyable activity that you and your friends can do together for years. Like I said, I've been doing it for probably 10 years now. And I am absolutely excited and hyped up about getting ready for the 2016 version. And I'm recommending that Death Moon be part of the viewing lineup. 
We'll talk about this on the next few episodes of the show. We'll probably talk about it all the way into and through the month of October. I'll talk about the films that I'm screening. I'll talk about the dishes that I'm preparing, the cocktails that I am pouring. Obviously, I'll talk about the cigars. I'll talk about the wonderful, spectacular pipe tobaccos uh, that, that I'm using. And we will just enjoy an autumnal celebration that will really take us right into the Yuletide season, frankly. Let me remind you again of the different platforms that you can listen to the show on. You can listen to the show on the Blackwater Media YouTube channel. You can listen to the show on the William Lester Facebook page and also the Dr. William Lester Show Facebook page. You can also listen to the show on Google+. Plus. I am so glad that you guys uh, are listening to the show, enjoying the show. Please continue to, to give comments. Please go to the Dr. William Lester Show Facebook page and leave comments and recommendations and reflections and memories and do the same thing on the Blackwater YouTube channel. I want this to be an experience shared. So we've come to the end of another program. And again, thank you guys so much. We will talk again and it will always be cool. It will always be vintage. And I will talk to you next time.